YSB. Come all you're back on my channel. Uh, been a couple weeks, been out and about Disney, different places recently. Didn't do all that blogging, just spending family time. Um, right now, trying to keep my eyes on the road so you can't actually see me and all that other good stuff like that. Try to look down every once in the blue. But uh, again, people, go if you do not already have it, go Fobo screenings.com that's g-o-f-o-b-o screenings.com it allows you to see advanced screening of movies last night my wife and i were privileged enough to go and get a sneak peek of a movie that comes out next week thanksgiving day or thanksgiving weekend uh green book with and i can't i'm not even gonna say his name come a butcher it um but ali M. Ali is what we're going to call him. Amazing actor. Um, he's in House of Cards. Amazing actor. He's in um, he's Cottonmouth on Luke Cage. Amazing actor. Um, I cannot think of the movie that he won the award for, but I can see the face of the, the picture of the boy on the cover. But uh, Mahir Rashari, oh, I'm so butchering. I'm so sorry, sir. But you're an amazing actor. If you are in a movie, the chances of me watching it are highly likely. Like, that's a real thing. But um, I saw the movie with him and, uh, and Viggo Mortensen, Mr. Um, History of Violence. By the way, shout out to Styles P. Because Styles has such an amazing line. I forgot what freestyle. I just got a playlist of Styles. Because Styles is in my, in my top 10. Probably top 7 greatest rappers of all time. I don't know if I can say top five yet, but definitely top seven. He's not lower than seven to me on the on the list. And I do think, don't at me, he is he is the best member of the locks. Like I'm not even joking. It was Kiss for a while, and I still think Kiss is more lyrical, but the honesty in the rap of what Styles brings is, is is to me is what I love. If you look at my track record for my favorite rappers, it's people who speak, it's honest. You know, like Styles and Gee gun talk, and Gee extreme gun talk. Let's let's not confuse the two. Extreme gun talk. I mean, some gun talk make you look at me like, all right, Styles. But he'll throw in the honesty with the gun talk. You know what I mean? But uh, the the line I always think about with the Vigo uh, Mortensen movie, and History of Violence is a really good movie. If you have not seen it, you should probably pick that up and go watch that. It's a really good movie. But he said, uh, History of Violence. He looking for more trouble. Whoo! It's a hot line because that was actually what the movie was about. Viggo Mortensen was the, the, the history of violence, but that's a, that's a side note, neither here nor there. Viggo Mortensen is also Mr. Eastern Promises, which is another ill movie if you haven't seen it with uh, the super dope Naomi Watts. She's in it. Yeah, shout out to Naomi Watts. She's super dope in that. But um, Eastern Promises has a scene in there. If you are not familiar with Eastern Promises, let me tell you how gully this is. They have a scene where they're in a shower scene where it's him and two guys it's a Russian movie it's like Russian mobsters or whatever the dudes got knives no bigger than this I'm not even joking like like this is how big the knives were so you know how up close and personal they had to get and they in the they in the in the sauna room of a bathroom so you know dudes is in towels getting it in with knives this big listen here if a dude is ready to stab you and slice you up you don't want to be around that guy. Like, let's just be honest, okay? And so, that's probably one of the best fight scenes I've seen. Um, up there with the uh, fight scene from The Punisher. Is The Punisher or is it Luke, uh, Daredevil? It might be Daredevil Season 2. Well, shout out to Daredevil Season 2. I call that the Cuban links. Only built for Cuban links. Because, yeah, it says Daredevil Season 2. But it really should have been Daredevil featuring The Punisher. Sort of like it should have been Raekwon featuring Ghostface, you know, but Raekwon gets the credit for it. Sort of like that. But uh, that that scene where they're they're fighting and where he's fighting his way through that small corridor jail cell. Yes. Think something like that, but then throw in knives. This big people. But anyway, so uh, my wife and I got the advanced screening. So, yes, it was free. Shout out to GoFoboScreenings.com. And we were able to see the movie Green Book. Now I'm here to tell you, um, we've been getting advanced screenings now. This is our third or fourth one. Definitely the best one we've seen so far. Really, really good movie. Um, racially Charged deals with uh, um, a, a, a guy by the name of Dr. Don Shirley, who's played by Mr. M. Ali's character. 
and uh, Tony Lip, who was played by Viggo Mortensen, guy from the Bronx, and it's about um, Ali wanting to play the the type of music he plays on the piano, which he was really amazing um, doing, by the way, as well. Wants to play as far as um, playing in the South in the in the sixties, where you you already know what it is for a black man. So the it starts off with the guy not really, you know, being cool with them or whatever, not really into black people, is, you can assume, Italian guy, but, um, it, it's, it's really good, it's a, it's a very good story, I can see this in the running, if someone were to throw this out and say, hey, this is a potential Oscar winner, I, I, I wouldn't even be shocked, it, it was really, really well done, had some good funny moments on both sides from from Ali as well as, as Vigo. Um, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the dynamic of how the friendship budded. And I'm not telling you anything you don't know. You can see the trailers and kind of get a, 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 a gist of, of what's going on here. But um, I, I highly recommend it. Um, Ali did such a good job. Vigo did a really good job too. So I, I see that he's a, he's been nominated. If he won Best Supporting Actor, I wouldn't be shocked. I, I thought Vigo did a really, really good job overall as far as his performance was concerned. Ali is as always. I mean, I don't know what he's in that he's not crushing it in. It's, it's just what he does. So of course his performance was a top notch. Performance, and he had many multi layers um, to his character, as far as the complications in which he was going through, and and why he felt he didn't fit in anywhere. You know, and he had a bunch of different things going in. We're not gonna get into all that because I do want people to see the movie. But it was it was a really really good movie, um, especially in this climate. I'll say this so when the movie was over and we're in the movie theater with with a mix of different people there's black people in there there's white people in there there's Middle Eastern people in there um all type people were in the movie theater it was a multicultural movie and when the movie was over right and I, I wasn't expecting this at all like I'm gonna be 100 with you I wasn't expecting this at all but there was a full on clap from the entire auditorium the movie theater whatever you wanna call it of people, meaning that it, they did such a good job of just explaining the struggle of what a black person has to deal with. And granted, this is in the 1960s. It's the same thing today. Like, let's not be fooled. And it's becoming a little bit more relevant nowadays where you can see it. Like, this is like a real thing for what black people have to deal with and being in certain areas and how, hey, as long as you're doing the, the dance and the entertaining, oh yeah, you're fine. But the moment you step out of that realm for what they pay you to do to entertain, right? And that's what, you know, and it, it, what's good about it is I thought about that with with sports people and and I thought about that in reference to to singers and entertainers and, and you know, there's a certain demographic of people who love you and they'll love you as long as you're doing that one thing that they paid you to do which is entertain them and the moment you stop entertaining them you go back to being black and so the idea and the understanding that look man you might have off a little bit better than the next black person but you still shouldn't forget you're still black at the end of the day and that's that's not to knock people of different demographics who do not look at black people a certain type of way all the time but just see us as, as regular people as human beings too who who hurt who cry who laugh who smile who go through pain as well but there are this is it's a real thing right where there's a group of people out there who look i'm cool with you as long as you're in this one little box and you're doing this and the moment you step outside this box or you stop doing what i'm paying you to do and I always think, you know, athletes and entertainers. Because as long as, oh, man, they'll cheer for you as an athlete. But let you come in there in a bar or date their girl, their, you know, blonde hair, blue eye, whatever you want to call it. It becomes a problem. And so the fact that the movie did it so well and just explaining really what that's like 
and then to go a step further and then to have such a multicultural and i mean it wasn't like okay these are all you know young you know white guys and white girls and i mean there were some elderly people in there too it was just a good multicultural movie theater and to have everyone i don't know of everyone but i'll say let's say definitely a good 90 percent of people were clapping in the movie i i thought that was just amazing a great portrayal of what the actors did what the writing was like what the director did to convey the message and have everybody think wow i needed to clap and then i heard a white lady who looked like she had an adopted daughter the daughter looked middle eastern or stuff at the end of the the movie as they were walking out and she's like wow you know the daughter you know dog like she was like 10 11 or so around my my son's age my oldest and she's like man that looked like it was you know it was like a lot of racial stuff and she was like the mother was like yeah this is what happens this is why we can't be judging people by that and i thought listen really good and so there's another movie i want to see the hate you give and so that's on my list to see next it was just you know because we had the free advanced screening of this we saw this but i do highly recommend this movie i think the movie's really good to see. Um, I don't think we could take your kids. It's PG-13, but they did throw out the F word. Maybe once or twice. There was definitely some cursing in there. So, potentially you could take your kids to see it and just explain to them, you know, we don't use these words, especially if you're like me and my wife and we don't curse. So, But as far as the movie as a whole, it was really good. I do highly recommend it. Sorry for the long rant. I'm about to head into work, so we're about to cut this short. But as always, people, on purpose, have a wonderful, blessed, productive, stress-free day. Till next time.